in sections one and two, we developed a linear quadratic control problem statement for a pursuer target engagement. We wrote the kinematics as a linear time invariant system and identified all of the matrices involved in the problem. Our state was the relative position and the relative velocity of the pursuer and target. In section two, we discussed that the control that minimized the performance index was the following formula, where the matrix P of T is the solution to a differential algebraic Riccati equation. The topic for today is to solve this dare and determine the optimal control. The first thing we want to note is that we're working with a final time problem. It's P evaluated at capital T. It can be tricky to integrate backwards in time. So what I want to do is introduce a new variable. I'm going to call it time to go. You can think of it as time left to an event. And our event here is intercept. Time to go is simply the final time or the time of the event minus your present time. So if the current time is zero, then you have capital T seconds to the event. And if you're at the event, then time to go is simply zero. With this new independent variable, we've transformed this final value problem to an initial value problem where we can integrate forwards in time. but we need to transform the rest of the Riccati equation. Specifically on the left-hand side, we have this derivative, which is with respect to our original time t, but we want that derivative with respect to time to go. So to get it in a form with respect to time to go, we'll simply use the chain rule. And then from the formula of time to go, we finally arrive at the result. It kind of makes sense because we've changed the direction in which time travels. Our independent variable used to go from zero to capital T, and now it goes from capital T to zero as real time proceeds. So that reversal of time is reflected in the direction of P dot. So here's where we were with our dare. Here's where we are now having transformed it with time to go. And at this point, you may be tempted to substitute in all of the problem data, A, B, Q, R, M, and integrate out the terms in this matrix equation. But if you do that, and you're like me, you're gonna find a challenge. So, Instead of spending further time trying to work through and manipulate, there must be an easier way to do this. And one trick when working with Riccati equations is to introduce a new variable. We're gonna essentially transform the dependent variable in this by assigning the inverse of P to the new variable S. Their product is identity, and the derivative of their product is zero, and from that, we have this formula, which will be handy, as you'll see. Here's our Riccati equation. And for brevity, now I'm going to omit the time to go dependence. We're first going to multiply this Riccati equation through by minus s. And then we're going to post multiply by s. Okay, look, on the left-hand side, that product PS is identity. And on the right-hand side, we can cancel a whole bunch of terms because they're all identity. And so we're left with another matrix equation that's quadratic in S. 
And so you might say, well, what's with all this fancy footwork? What have we gained by doing this manipulation? Well, recall that in our problem statement, the control penalty was non-existent. Remember, x transpose qx is the control penalty term in the integral, and we didn't have that term. So q, the q matrix, is a bunch of zeros. Knowing that and substituting that into the Riccati equation, we still are left with this nonlinearity. And it's a final value problem. But going to time to go and then transforming in terms of S, notice where that nonlinearity is now. It's in the last term associated with the Q matrix. And since Q is zero, we now have a linear initial value problem and no longer a Riccati equation, but something called a Lyapunov equation. This is what we're going to use to solve our engagement optimization problem statement. So now let's substitute in our data. And to start, we'll just work on these two terms. The first term, pretty easy. Q is zero, so that goes away. The second term, B R inverse B transpose. Let's, here's R and B. and then inserting the rest of our problem data, we can see the individual elements of what becomes our Lyapunov equation. At this point, we can pull out the individual equations and attempt to solve them. Let's identify those. Let's work first with S11. So remember, matrix vector multiplication, rows times columns. So there's the equation for S11 dot. Notice that we've applied the initial condition. S12 dot, S21 dot, and S22 dot. And check this out, S22 dot, its right-hand side is just two. So we can integrate that without knowing any of the other elements of the S matrix. The other thing to note here is that S12 is actually equal to S21. They're the same equation. So the solution here is symmetric. S is a symmetric matrix. And also then P, the solution to the Riccati equation, will be a symmetric matrix. Let's solve for S22. So there we go. Directly integrating through D is the constant of integration applying the initial condition, and finally obtaining S22 as a function of time to go. Now that we have S22, we can substitute it into the off-diagonal terms of S. Let's do S21. Right-hand side minus S22. Okay, substitute that in. And then directly integrate. Again, a constant of integration appears. Identify it as zero to finally get the S21 result. And then since we're symmetric, S12 is the same. And then finally, with S12 determined, we can solve for S11. Substituting in, integrating, applying the initial condition, we get S11. So the solution of our Riccati equation is S inverse. We now know the terms of S, so we just need to invert this two by two matrix. Here's the formula for that inversion. We need to evaluate the determinant of S. There's the formula for the determinant. And now let's just substitute in those elements to evaluate the determinant. Let's expand. And now let's group the quartic terms and the cubic terms and the quadratics. And finally, adding on the linear and zeroth order term, evaluating the coefficients and bringing it all together for the determinant of S. 
So we have the elements of S, we have the determinant of S and the formula for its inversion, so we now have the matrix P. Here it is, our solution to the differential algebraic Riccati equation for our optimal control problem statement. But we still need to evaluate the optimal control. So going back to our solution that we uh, outlined in section two, we need to evaluate u star is minus r inverse b transpose p times the state x. And so u star, notice it depends on p1 and p2. So we're really only pulling from the bottom row in our Riccati equation solution. So substituting in those terms now. This is a feedback control law. It's a guidance law. We have the kinematics. The kinematics output the state, Z1, Z2, that's relative position, relative velocity. The guidance is determining the optimal acceleration that minimizes that performance index over the time interval. So it provides that U star that are fed back into the kinematics, the kinematics update, the guidance law is applied, the process continues until intercept occurs. To wrap this all up, we sought out to minimize the performance index constrained by the engagement kinematics. We applied linear quadratic control theory to determine the optimal control. Now, going forward in module four, we're gonna work with this optimal control solution to determine pronav, the optimal gain for intercept, and something called rendezvous guidance.